Hey, what's up, Maniacs? John here and Connor for Maniacs Garage. Today we're going to work on Project GTI. So this is his car, and we've done an exhaust on it. Actually, he did an exhaust on it before. It's a go back a few videos and try to find that. I'm also sporting the Jay Shackleford Engineering T-shirt today. I uh, met Jay at SEMA. Uh, we shot two interviews with him with a couple of cars that he built, a truck and a car, actually. Check that out. Um, it's on our channel. And uh, so anyway, back to the project at hand. So what we're doing here today or what we're gonna try to do, and I'm gonna have him do it because I want you guys to see a little effort, a little thought, you know, a couple of, couple of good tools do help. Um, you know, you can do this. What we're gonna do today is he, so he wants to install a badgeless grill into this car. Ooh, here it is. All right, so what that is, Basically, it removes this big VW badge. So this is gonna be the new grill. So the issue with putting in a new grill like this is that this circle cuts into the hood. In order to get this badgeless grill installed, you gotta put a block out plate right up here. So it comes, the kit comes with it. It's a piece of ABS, looks like. And you're supposed to glue it in here. It comes with the glue and everything. And then you just paint this to color your car, white in this case. But the thing is that you'll still have a little line right here. And, and that's fine if that's all you could do with it. You know, most people probably wouldn't even notice that line. So, but we're custom around here and we want to make a steel piece welded in, which is going to grind this hood up right here. And it's going to require the entire hood to be painted, uh, repainted to match. But again, I think that's the right way to do it. Um, and you want to go ahead and weld it in and it has to be out of steel. And then what I'm gonna do with this, we'll actually use this piece down at the bottom here and we'll plastic weld this into the bumper so it gets rid of that little half moon shape down there because the kit comes with this big piece that you're supposed to just stick on with uh, you know 3M double face. And you're supposed to stick it on like this, paint it the color of your car, and then it gets rid of that little half moon down here. But again, I think for just custom, clean, sake, we'll put this down here, plastic weld it in, sand it, Repainting the whole bumper already anyway because he's got some damage that he wants to take care of on both sides here. And so that bump, this bumper needs to get repainted anyway. So that's what we're gonna work on today. We'll see how far we get. We're gonna try to maybe make this a two. We're gonna try to make this maybe a two-part video. Uh, all the fabrication stuff in one and then maybe the bodywork, sanding, and I think we're gonna attempt to paint this, these pieces ourselves. So that'll be number two. So actually, just got informed that he does not want to paint the hood and the bumper because he is going to get this car wrapped in a color. We don't know for sure. He says British Racing Green right now, which I support. I think that's going to look really cool, but we'll see what it ends up being in the end. So that'll be part two, I guess, is the wrapping of this car, or that'll just be a video all by itself. So let's get to it. All right, so it looks like the grill's going to come out fairly easily. Some few scooters here and it might be like popped in right here. But in order to get the bumper off, I think we're going to have to jack the car up, pull the wheels off, probably pull these headlights out, which you may want to watch out for. You may need to unplug the battery. Well, you definitely should unplug the battery or unplug the battery. Disconnect the battery. Um, you always disconnect the negative terminal of the battery. Disconnect the battery, pull headlights, and then try to get this front bumper off. So. So the bumper came off relatively easily, did not have to remove the headlights, so that's really cool. It just pushes in underneath it. And then after that, uh, we went ahead and took the piece that came with the kit, the little ABS piece that fits in here, grinded the lip off the back of it that was supposed to go behind it, so that was just gonna help you glue it in. We're not gonna use this for that. But we wanna use this for a template to make our metal piece for there, so. Now we could just go ahead and set this down here. And then my, what I'm thinking is, actually Connor brought this up, so good job there. Yeah, 
Um, instead of just running it to be just a single edge, we're gonna go ahead and fold it over so it'll be kind of a nice finished edge like the hood is already. So that is the right way to do it. Takes a little bit longer, but definitely gonna be cooler. So, so now we're gonna go ahead and transfer this shape onto our piece of metal. I think this is 18 gauge. It's paint lock, so the back side of it won't rust, so that's really cool. And get this cut, start welding. Plastic piece, ABS piece, here's our metal piece that we made a template, basically use this as a template. We wanna put a break in it and then fold it over so we have a nice thick lip, finished lip at the bottom of the hood there. So now it's just kind of guessing how far in to do this and hopefully I'm guessing the right way. Taking into account the thickness of the sheet metal. Pretty committed there. I'm just gonna use this to squash it. And then gonna have to use a baby sledge to kind of finish it off, I think. All right, so bill and head move. Ran out of gas for the welder. All we got is one tack right there on that piece. So we're just gonna move on to this right now because we can't go get gas today, Saturday, it's already too late. So we're gonna go ahead and reshape this piece that was for up there. We're gonna put it down here so it needs to be cut down more, reshaped, grind the paint out of here. It's a nice hard, uh, rough surface so we can bond this in with some plastic weld, probably some uh, plastic epoxy bond. Let's get working on that. So now that, now that the weld is all done, fully solid, it was welded one tack at a time, cooling it in between with the air hose, and then until it's fully solid, then we grinded it down. Again, you're trying to keep, you know, trying to be sensitive to not overheating this area right here, because you don't want to get this warp or something funny, and it didn't, so that's perfect. So now what's going to happen is uh, Connor's going to go ahead and use a 220. He's going to feather the paint back even further right here, maybe about four to five inches back, because what that's gonna help is when he puts the Bondo on, it's gonna bind, you know, you want it to stick to this right here too, and then sand it down, but it needs to be able to stick to it. So you're basically just taking the sheen off of the paint with this and feathering it in right here. Instead of doing it like this, you go like this, that's how you mix it together. So you go like your way like that, and then you take it, spread it out like this. So you're kind of crisscrossing left and right, basically, right? Yeah, I see. And see how it's mixing the color really good? Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do too, is you want to take this off of here, so, because there's still some on there with no hardener in it. You want to get that off of the squeegee and mix it into the batch because that'll be a soft spot where the hardener is not going to kick, it's not going to harden. And that's when you see like some Bondo jobs where there's like little pits and stuff that are like falling out of it or little bubbles in it. That's because this wasn't mixed properly. So that's a nice mix right there. So what you want to do is for your first coat, you want to get, you're not worried about spreading it smooth or anything like that yet. You know, what you want to do is you want to make sure you get it into these a little bit of the welds that are still showing, right? So it's even though this weld is solid, there's a little height difference there. Can you see me? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then now, get yourself a good amount. 
and then I'm putting some pressure like kind of like working it like I don't know how to explain it but there's an edge on the hood right here right so I'm kind of working it like this to that edge You don't have to worry about trying to hit it perfect the first time, you know, you want to get a nice, put a nice thinner coat on right now. Should have listened to my advice, stopped on that first one, but that's actually pretty good right there. So let's let that kick right now. It's going to kick in probably five minutes. And maybe like in 10 minutes, we're ready to just sand on that and see where we're at. This unfortunately is trash. I was hoping that we can also bondo this at the same time. But unfortunately, our glue job on this from yesterday did not hold. But we went ahead and re-sanded this piece, the both pieces. And we're using a different JB weld this time. So I'm hoping it's going to hold. But now we got to wait for that to dry. But man, that's looking pretty cool though. I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. 